uh, pick up where I left off on these videos. Uh, I'm sorry, on this set of slides about oxidation reduction. So this is a household battery. And so in a household battery, like an alkaline, you know, a, a battery that you put in a flashlight or something, you've got uh, the, they're alkaline batteries, alkaline because they're calcium hydroxide. And it's basically a zinc manganese battery. And the paste is part of the anode, but there's also the salt bridges stuff here. Okay. So the chemical equation looks like this, right? So this is the oxidation. So zinc is being oxidized. And again, how do I know just from looking at the reaction it's an oxidation? Oxidation is loss of electrons. That means the electrons are going to be a product. Reduction is a gain of electrons. That means the electrons will be a reactant. Now to do the overall what we're going to do is we're going to add the reactions together, and then we're just going to clean it up. So on this slide, I'm going to go through it with you. And in the next sets of slides, when we do the other reactions, I'll let you hit pause. And if you want to hit pause, you can. So to add them together, we're literally going to take the stuff on the left-hand side of both reactions and put it together, stuff on the right-hand side of both reactions, and put it together. So you can see it looks like this. Zinc and two hydroxides, two MnO2s, water, and two electrons. Everything on the left is on the left. On the right, we have the zinc oxide, water, and two electrons. You can see that. Then the Mn2O3 and the two hydroxides. Now you see how the hydroxides, the water, and the electrons are the same on both sides. So we're going to cancel out anything that's the same on both sides. So you have rewritten here, and you can see the hydroxides will cancel. Why should they cancel at the same time? You can see the hydroxides cancel, the waters cancel, the two electrons cancel. And then the next thing is just to clean, to rewrite it, but clean it up. So we'll just rewrite it the remaining. That's the overall reaction in a household battery. Okay. So a car battery is a lead hydrogen battery. So here's the, oh, here's the, you tell me, is this an oxidation or a reduction? That's right, it's an oxidation. Okay, so lead is being oxidized to lead sulfate. And here, lead, is, so lead is both being oxidized and reduced. Actually, the lead is being reduced here. So this is a lead with a plus four charge, and this is lead with a plus two charge. So over, overall, hit pause and try it on your own. See if you can write. The overall reaction, I'll do it in steps. So hit pause. So the first step is just write everything that's on each side. So the lead and the hydrogen sulfate, the lead, lead oxide, and these things here. Everything on that side, left side of the electrons. And there should be the same number of electrons on each side. If they don't cancel, you have, it gets more complicated. All right, so the next step is to cancel out things that are the same on both sides so that we write the reaction. Give you a second to do that. Hit pause. Try it on your own. All right, so here's cancel. You can see this, the 3H plus and the 2H plus, the two electrons cancel. You can, that's a 3 and that's a 2. I know it's not very pretty. And that cancels as well. All right, and so now we're just going to rewrite it cleaned up. So you see how the three became a two because we canceled one out here and the electrons are gone. All right, and in this case, see how we have the same thing on both sides, two of this here, the hydrogen sulfate and two lead sulfates. So let's just kind of clean it up, put those together. Sometimes you just do that. That's the overall reaction. You can verify for yourself that it's balanced. Now, how do we determine what type of battery to use for what situation? That's the, tech, the technology, you know, it's nice to have rechargeable batteries. The car battery is rechargeable, but it eventually it dies. The white stuff you see on an old battery is lead sulfate, that white solid. All right, this is a lithium battery. So these are some of the earlier generation um, rechargeables. Actually, this is a more common rechargeable. So to recharge a battery, what you do is you switch, you give it an outside electricity source and you push the electrons back the other way, which means there has to be more voltage than they would be if you literally just push them back. And then you have to be able to reverse the reaction. So that means if something turns into something that leaves a container, you can't do that. You have to be able to hold the atoms kind of in place 
so that you can push the electrons back on them and it'll reconstitute itself. So it's, the technology is, is not trivial. All right, so this is a lithium battery reaction. So is this the, this is the oxidation. This is the reduction. So this is the kind of questions I might ask on the test. So hit pause, try to write the overall. Good, all right, back from pause. Okay, now cancel out the things that are the same on both sides. So I'll hit pause. back from pause and you can see the lithium ion and the electrons are the same on both sides. All right, and then we'll clean it up. So if we pause, and that's the cleanup. All right, the fact that this arrow goes back and forth, it didn't come out this, the font's weird, but that means this is a reversible reaction and lithium batteries are rechargeable. Okay, so these are advantages of lithium batteries, high energy density, so um, does not need a whole bunch of priming or removal and regular charges, all that's needed. They don't just discharge on their own, low maintenance, okay, and you get high current rates. So these are used like your power tools, okay. These are just some other, some other disadvantages. Okay, you can't ship them they control, control their expensive. Okay, nickel cadmium batteries are NICAD batteries. So these are an earlier generation of um, rechargeables. All right, so cadmium, that's why it's called a CAD and nickel. Okay, cadmium is being oxidized, nickel is being reduced. So again, try it on your own. See if you hit pause, write the overall reaction. So we're back from pause. There's the overall reaction. Okay, now we want to cancel things that are the same on both sides. So hit pause. All right, we're back. Now we'll cancel out things that are the same on both sides. So you can see the two hydroxides and the two electrons are the same. And then cleaning it up, hit pause. And there you go. Uh, hybrid vehicles and this technology is, is growing very rapidly. Electric cars are you know, not a novelty anymore. You see them all the time. You can even plug your car in at Mesa College. Right? So very interesting to talk about that in terms of uh, carbon, di uh, carbon dioxide use, right? Because it's from electricity. Okay. So these are some things like when this first came out. Okay, so the electric motor uses the battery to start and the car turns an alternator, which can uh, the I'm sorry, the battery, the turning, the running of the car's engine can recharge the battery, right? So the energy from the engine running can recharge the battery, but that's where the gasoline comes in, okay? And then gasoline can assist the electric motor when it's you know not when there's just not enough energy from the electricity. The technology with the Prius when they first came out was. We're kind of giving a computer to determine when to run the fuel, when to run the gas, and when to run the electricity. So this is an example uh, Prius. Okay. Right. So these are, like I said, electric cars, and this is already uh, this is probably outdated already. Like a lot of people, more people have electric cars. Okay. Now batteries. Uh, backing up a little bit. So if you think about it, if you plug your if you run an electric car, are you actually working, uh, being energy efficient and working to remove greenhouse gases? And the, the, the answer to that question kind of depends on when you charge your electric car. If you're charging your electric car from your home and your home is powered by a traditional power plant, then you're getting energy from burning fossil fuels to recharge your battery. And remember, there's a loss of efficiency at each step. So you're actually getting a little bit less efficiency than maybe just from burning the gasoline. But if you're recharging your vehicle at a power, from a power source that gets the energy from solar or hydroelectric, then absolutely. So as more and more homes and there's more uh, charging stations that are solar, so for example, Mesa, you can plug your car in and it's from solar, right? 
And as I said, the technology is improving significantly. Okay. So, so batteries are, you know, have a, a lot of uh, a lot of advantages. The disadvantages are, you know, these heavy metals. Right? Heavy metal means metals that are high in high in atomic mass. They and these things live a long time in the environment, and they're not really good for health. That's why you shouldn't throw your batteries in the trash can, even your household batteries. So, um, you know, learning how to, uh, us as a chemical industry, learning how to recycle this material so that we can make it back into batteries again. That would be the, the, the way to go, and I believe that's probably the wave of the future. It's just a function of the, the science coming up with it and then the technology working to make it work efficiently and affordably because you can do anything in a test tube, but when you start getting things really, really big and have lots and lots of, lots of mass, you know, a little bit of waste from cadmium is no big deal, but when you have a lot of it, it is a big deal. And so learning how to do all those reactions in those types of environments is really where the technology is going to go. Right? So recycling batteries, using rechargeable batteries, um, making collection of batteries easier so people don't have to find, you know, put them in a separate place. Right? If you remember, you guys are too young to remember, but recycling, they didn't used to have curbside recycling. And it used to be you had to take all your recycling someplace. Maybe when you were little kids, you still might remember that. Now, of course, the fact that it's curbside, people are much more compliant. Same thing with batteries and electronics, right? And now every once in a while, there's an electronics recycling day, and you can take your used electronics down, but you have to go somewhere. It isn't curbside yet. It's starting to get there. Okay. Uh, interestingly, biochemically, most of the energy that your body generates is actually from redox. So this is just, and, and to go into all of the detail would require a whole other course. But this molecule here, NADH, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, this is produced from oxidation of glucose, from burning glucose, which is what your body does. And what happens is the electrons from the oxidation of glucose, which I showed you in a very early slide, get transferred to this molecule, and then this is inside of the mitochondrion. And then it transfers its electrons, and the electrons get transferred through this membrane. A whole bunch of redox reactions. So here's one redox reaction, right? This gets oxidized. Then this coenzyme Q gets oxidized. Here's another oxidation from another molecule, right? Then this complex gets oxidized and then gets reduced. And then the electrons keep moving, 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 until finally oxygen gets reduced to water. That's the ultimate electron acceptor biochemically. This is really why you need oxygen. The reason you need oxygen is to accept electrons from all the oxidation or reduction that goes on. And what this does is used to make um, what's called ATP, which is the energy currency of living things. But my point is that this isn't really a battery, but this is electron transfer in membranes of your cells that takes place. And that's where actually most of the energy happens is from moving electrons around. All right, so at this point, okay, I just talked about this. So we get a lot of lot of energy, right? So how much energy is that? You can think about that. But uh, you know, again, kilojoules are pretty small. At the same time, you know, from eating from just eating food, you generate this energy, and it's, most of it's from redox, from oxidation and reduction. All right. At this point, you should be able to do the redox homework, which would be as I look it up on my notes here. Homework. Look. It's going to be homework six, I believe. Maybe homework, I don't know, whatever homework it is, but you, it will be assigned. There's also a um, reading assignment on batteries that you can look at. Okay, this should help. Have a good one.